I'm just waiting for the system to connect. Okay. There was a Zoom update recently, so th stuff works a little differently. The view of what now? Let's see. We are live on Facebook. Okay, we're live on Facebook. I'm glad to hear that. All right. Well, this is uh, Jeff Rubbo. I'm the president of this illustrious organization of fish and creatures and that sort of thing. And uh, I'm talking largely to the 4-H club of Wakala County, am I right? Yes. Well, Thank that's you. wonderful because I think you guys are the future and you're the ones that are going to have to carry on to be able to preserve all of these different wonderful creatures that we have. I just want to say, remind you how really totally fortunate you really are to live in this county. You look at the rest of uh, this country and everything else with the big urban centers and all the noise, the pollution, the whole traffic, the whole insanity that's there. This is the one place that you can get in your car and drive over and see an alligator. Can you imagine how many places you can actually get to see an alligator in the United States, everything else? Imagine if you're, when I was a kid, I was in Brooklyn. I used to read about alligators. And once I even got to go to the zoo, but here I can go a mile from my house right here to Otter Lake. And during the mating season, I'll see alligators. So likewise, I used to read and hear about moray eels. We're gonna look at some moray eels right here. And there are all these other different creatures in the sea. So if I give them a fish to play with, you might wake them up. And then we have an eel show that's going on. Well, if you guys want to see an eel, then you can just go off shell point, put out a trap, and uh, chances are you might catch a moray eel, a sand eel, and so on. Now these, these eels are, uh, you probably catch a lot skinnier eels because these are pets and they're used to being fed and they expect to be fed. They don't have to work very hard for it, but the eel normally eats crabs. Here, for example, I've got a squid, and this squid is what I would likely see off our dock at night. And uh, let's see if we can get a, get a taker. Yep, we've got a taker right there. So the interesting thing about mora eels is that they have, um, they have very sharp teeth. They're venomous in their own right. They bite through the bacteria that's on them. And if one bites you, you will bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed because it has an anticoagulant in it. And a lot of those things with anticoagulants, various other things that we look toxins, whether it's in snakes or whatever, are very important in medicine. That's very, you know, various substances that, uh, that control our nerves, our digestion, our functions. It's much more enhanced in creatures like the more eels here. So while these guys are enjoying this little snack I'm going to put in for them, uh, uh, you can see they're getting excited. And you can notice they have little tubes sticking out of their nose. So that makes them very, very responsive and receptive to smell. It's not always as good as you would think because, look, they're swimming over fish and they're kind of just banging around. But they're very, very excited. So let's see. We'll just see if somebody will take. This is where I have to be careful because this is, this is where it could get dangerous is feeding them because they never mean to bite you, but sometimes when it comes to food time, they get real excited and kind of go for that. So let's go look at the uh, some other hungry creatures here. I hope they're hungry, although we feed them sometimes and uh, on regular times, and this is an off season, but or an off time, but I expect we'll get some takers over here. Yeah, right, okay, yeah. She approves, she approves. Now this is an anchovy that I'm feeding her right here. This is a big, big anchovy. We have little tiny ones off the dock, but chances are, yep, we have some excitement and some enthusiasm here. So again, you're lucky to be in Wakala County and everybody is terrified of sting rays because they sting, but if you, have any common sense like walking in the water and waiting around and you shuffle your feet, they'll get out of your way. Stingrays are very smart animals. They're, uh, they're very much, um, they have a big soul 
sexual behavior. And the only time that they're really a problem is when they're coming in short to mate. And then they have other things on their minds, like the birds and the bees and the boys and girls and all that stuff. They're dating and biting each other and courting like that. Um, then you run into some risks. But otherwise, I really hate to see people catch stingrays on the beach, reel them up, and leave them there to die because they, they don't get to know these animals. And if they did, they might think twice about uh, killing them. So this is a, these are other creatures on the planet besides ourselves. And again, I say you're fortunate to live in Wakawa County. And you have a responsibility for Hers because all of these creatures are in jeopardy. All of them are being polluted and destroyed. We're having county commissions giving subdivision after subdivision, which ultimately puts nitrates out into the water, degrades the water, the normal feed that these creatures eat. All these little fishes that I'm showing here, anchovies and uh, silver sides, and all of these things are basically eating the marshes and the, and the, uh, the woods and the swamps and all the trees and leaf litter and detritus that comes down the rivers are not feeding the great big things like the scarf, like the garfish we see over here or these stingrays. It's feeding a lot of the little guys. And these little guys are fed upon by other things. Again, see a nice anchovy here. What else do we have? And we have a uh, silver perch, several of them. Uh, these are just things that we actually catch in the shrimp net. This is what they would be normally called bycatch. So when you throw a shrimp net there, you catch shrimp and you catch a lot of other little fish. And there's a lot of people who believe that's just a total waste and a terrible thing. Well, ask these guys if this is a terrible thing when you throw this stuff overboard. Is it wasted? Nothing is wasted. In nature, nothing is wasted. And we have a bountiful Gulf of Mexico that has all this wonderful stuff in it. And really, we should be eating and living out of this gulf. Instead of school lunches with some fish thing that comes from, uh, I don't know, Taiwan or whatever else it is, why aren't we eating mullet? Why aren't we teaching the life history of a mullet, how the mullet spawns and lives in the marshes and all of that sort of thing? This is what we should be doing in our classrooms. Now, if you can't do it in your classroom, please come to Gulf Specimen. This is what we are about. This place is the food chain. This is where we get to see what the birds eat. We love to see that big blue, blue heron or that egret walking along the marsh and along a pond and everything else. Well, that's eating bugs and it's eating small creatures. And that's what this place is all about. So we're gonna be looking at a few other things here. Now, the fact that I'm just carrying some food around me with me, not sure what we're gonna jump, what's gonna pop out at us, but uh, if you put food in the water, things will happen. Like for example, this is a spider crab and a decorator crab. And they're sitting there kind of peacefully and still the food gets out and then you'll start to see things move. All of a sudden there'll be creatures in here that you didn't think up. Over here, for example, we have a sponge crab, a crab that basically is called a dromed crab that, lives, that likes to put sponges or in this case, a piece of sea pork on its back. And also as the food gets out, you see the little polyps on the soft coral. These things, which are all reaching out, there's little tiny tentacles. It could also be that when the river flushes the swamps, and there's protein that's out there, here they come. This is what you would type like find. If you're, uh, you would see the corals with the polyps coming out. You would see the shrimp coming out of the mud. These hermit crabs that are starting to stir around and little fish, all because the protein is there. Well, that protein and that nutrient also comes from the trees in the forests. So when we're driving, we're watching, you're driving along 319 and you see the great big monster bulldozers smashing down the trees, grinding it up, ripping the roots out of the ground, all to make progress. Bear in mind that you are stealing the food and the nutrients from all these creatures. Now, I know we have to have, quote, progress. Don't forget, cancer is also progress for the body. But nevertheless, uh, we have to have progress, we, we are told by our various government people. And um, 
but we don't ask what is the cost of our progress. We don't look at that in relation to the food chain. We just basically accept the progress. But progress has a cost and ask these creatures about that. So we've been looking at a few other things like, don't know what we're gonna see here. Here are just a few different fish. All right, we have remoras here. These are the shark suckers, if I can get them interested in stuff. And they've come up to uh, see, do you wanna come and get some here? Huh? This, is a sh this is a fish that uh, it's, it has its dorsal fin, these guys over here. That's what they hang on to sharks and sea turtles and manatees. And uh, they use that to hitch a ride. Well, guess what? There's people that have been studying medical devices based on the suction disc of the um, remora and how that fastens on to something. And there's been engineering trying to study how that works. A lot of the things like Velcro come from products that we use that come from nature. They come from the design and the function and the wonderful, the wonderful functionality that nature has. And uh, that's what Gulf Specimen does a lot of, is we work with a lot of biomedical labs, we work with research labs all over the place. Like for example, there's ghost crabs that run up and down the beach. Well, we worked with the military a number of years ago to basically help them find the right crab that they can put in a machine to measure it to help design an all-terrain vehicle that crawls up a mountainside like a crab. That had to come from the crab. We're fortunate enough to be able to work with the crab or the snapping shrimp that makes a claw, that snaps a claw and sends out a big sound wave over, over areas. So that's what we're really here. And in a way, you're also very lucky to have something like golf specimen in this little county. There isn't another place like this. Much almost anywhere in the world. Now, yes, there are lots of big public aquariums and they cost millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. And you walk along in glass walls and you look at them and say, wow, look at this. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but you know, the spiny box fish. about this but he's not going to eat it because what does he like he likes to eat tiny hermit crabs and snails. that's really what we have to feed him so even though the arrow crab that will be picking on it really to feed him we have to feed him little hermit crabs little hermit crab found in the mud and that stuff gets them crushing under, smashing down, and saying, who's out of it? So let's look at some of the little creatures here that were stealing their food from when we destroy the trees and the forest and the woods and the swamp. That sort of thing. So, and a little bit of food in here starts to wake up things it sometimes takes them a while but that's what brings life around and uh well we'll try some, a little while for the starfish to wake up and get out of the uh, mud. but this is where i chop up a fish and uh a little bit of blood or whatever. So we'll cut this into some smaller pieces and uh, see what wakes up here. But I expect in a minute, it might take a minute because they move slowly in the water, but once the, uh, the, the snow gets out, we may have to come back to this in a minute. Wake every... Uh, well, look, like here's a horseshoe crab getting started. It's a baby horseshoe crab. I guess what? Horseshoe crabs are very important. So if you end up in a hospital, I hope you know a lot of this horseshoe crab will clot in the presence of endotoxins, which are very sick. And uh, 
turning them out, but because of that, we're unfortunately starting to wipe out the horseshoe crabs, all the problems. So these things are here to kind of teach us how to get started, and then we need to develop a sample. This is a trigger fish, really off fish that there is in the world, which they use for malicious purposes. Like for example, if you're scuba diving and you're on the bottom and you're picking up something, they might tend to come over and bite your earlobe off from behind. And they also, are pretty nasty, they will take a crab or an oyster and bite their eyeballs off, their eye stalks, and then bite their legs off one at a time before they actually eat them. And they're very powerful, smart fish that uh, are out there. And they're also really good to eat. People like the trigger fish. It's one of the tastier ones. So here we're looking at we're looking at him because he's a big charismatic creature, but we haven't seen the sponges that are over here. This is called a garlic sponge, and it smells pretty sharply like garlic. Especially if you get on a night with a shrimp boat and catch a whole bunch of this stuff, boy, you can upchuck your dinner pretty quick. Next to a soft coral, and all these red sponges you see here, these are called uh, red beard sponge or Myrtaceae prolifera. You know people do they take these sponges, especially these red ones, and they grind them up and put them through a cheesecloth and then put them back in the water. So you have all this sponge goop. And guess what that sponge goop does? It reaggregates. It pulls itself back together and creates new little sponges out of the protein goop that's in there. So there's miraculous things of life. Look at, I mean, I look at this thing and I see all these multiple species. I see the regular common shell, the sand, occasionally on shelf point. Those are soft corals. Then they all, and they're all filtering the water and they're all keeping the water clean. But here's going to be the, the big free for all. These are some hermit crabs, a lot of hermit crabs. And they sit there and they're not doing much, not much like just happening right now until I start doing this. And we're gonna watch this for a few minutes. And I think a lot of things are gonna wake up. So it's just a question of holding on and seeing what happens. All right, so the, the big, this guy is a calico crab and looks like he might be in trouble or someone's eating him because there's tulip shells eating him right now. I don't guess we have any scallops, do we? Okay. We have one. Well, we may play with the scallop in a minute. But anyway, this particular snail here, the tulip shell, who is eating this crab. Yep, the crab's had it. So he's got two tulip shells devouring him. And there's all these scavengers that are keeping this stuff clean on the bottom and uh, consuming it. So as the food gets out here and starts traveling around, Everybody starts waking up. Now we've got a spider crab coming into it, another calico crab. Here's a big red hermit crab. In fact, we were looking for him a little while ago, couldn't find him. And uh, any action is there, and there's, they're, they're buried down. Uh, this guy apparently was alive, but is not now. This is called a cowrie shell, and he may. He doesn't have a hermit in him yet, but I can see. So nothing is wasted. Even when a shell dies, it becomes a home. And even if it's been around for a long time, like this one, look at all these little white shells inside. These are called, and I can't break one off easily right now, but um, these are called slipper limpets. And these are a sort of a, these are a, a snail-like gastropod. And they lay down on the bottom and then they'll get on top of each other and they can actually form a daisy chain, and the one on the bottom might turn, to turn into female and he'll move off, she'll move off, and the one comes down on top of that one will turn into a male, and then they change sexes on a regular basis. So, uh, I don't know, they don't, that's what nature does, it's a common thing for sexual variations. Uh, did we get anything moving here? Let's see. All right, here we got starfish moving. I told you it takes a little while for the uh, for the stuff to happen. But this is uh, the starfish has a Latin name. It's called Luidia clathrata. 
uh, hard to say what that name was really based on, but I'm sure it's there. Those of you that learned Latin and Greek, you can go back and look at that. And sometimes that would be a good volunteer project for someone who really likes Latin. Just come in and look at all these Latin names of all these creatures and, uh, and help us put some descriptions on it. That's one thing we like to have at Bell Specimen is volunteers, and we like to have volunteers that are very much interested in helping us make better exhibits to show people. But you can see there, Lividia, that starfish, is uh, very interested in eating that piece of crab, and the other one is all looking around for it. So this is life. This is life coming out of the sand, out of the mud. And again, this mud, this sand over here is filled with, uh, just it's not raw quartz sand. If I stir it up a little bit, a lot of the particles you're seeing there were probably pine trees or marsh grass or other things like that. Or they were fecal pellets that went through a hermit crab or a fiddler crab and uh, they pooped that out and they ate the diet. Um, and that becomes food for something else. So all these infinite connections go over and over and over again. All right. So let's try to feed a little bit of uh, and one thing we never know really what happens, what we're going to see when we throw some food into a tank. So maybe sometimes it's exciting, maybe nothing at all happens, or very little. But everyone likes to eat. So here's this hermit crab sitting here on the bottom. Now he's coming over. And you see his little, little rods over there. Those are all part so much of what we know about how our nervous systems work came from things like squid or sea hares. These were scientists that were studying it because we are a big complex animal. You know, we have nerves running, optic nerves, all this other stuff. But you can't, a very simple, he's got actually like uh, big lateral eyes, and they have an optic nerve that runs there, comes into those eyes, and they shine it on the telescope, they can the eyes of this creature. Let's see, we don't know what we're going to see with the feet, but we're going to keep moving around with our two minutes. Ooh, got some good stuff here. I don't know how much action we're going to have, but. I'll, I'll throw in a little bit anyway, just to see what might wake up or not wake up. But look at this gorgeous Zytopsine sponge. This grows out off the uh, the bottoms of Alligator Point, Shell Point, about 30, 40 feet of water. If you're diving out there, you can see it. Sometimes we'll get them in scallop drags. Uh, starfish, look at this guy. This is the uh, tiger star. And then these fascinating little sea pansies these are soft corals. And if you go on our website, Allison has taken some incredible pictures of these guys glowing in the dark at night. See, I'm just holding these things and you say, so what? But if the lights were out, I touch them, you see the flashes of blue and rippling waves of light and color going across their, their tissue. Just like we have jellyfish to do the same sort of thing. So notice I've just in this little space here, I've gone just this little distance and picked up so much. These are snails that uh, are inside their shells. But I bet you if we, well, we're going to dig around in another tank and find some buried snails here. OK. So ah, do we have any shells? Well, there it is. This is the operculum they used to close their door with. Sponges. It can go on and on. So I just want to say, Get out, enjoy Wapala County, and defend Wapala County. And the people that are going ahead and tearing up the woods and building the highways and smashing down things and putting up houses are not really your friends. 
They're not the friends of these creatures, and these creatures are your friends. They're going to feed you. They're going to feed our generations. You're the young people. You know, I'm 77 years old. I'm only going to last another 77 years old. So, uh, you know, at age 140, I'll be in here saying the same thing. Well, probably not. But you are. So you guys are the up-and-coming generation, and I urge you to get together to fight to protect what we have here. Protect turtles, protect fish, love sharks. Love all these different creatures and dolphins and be very grateful that you live in Wakala County. Thank you. Any well, that, gets through? that was great. Thank Here you. We, oh, and we, um, we, Evan joined us. One of our 4-H members joined us today. Hey, Evan. Hey. Hey, so Hi. what did you think of all that? Pretty cool. Definitely pretty cool. Have you ever been to the to the golf specimen lab in person? Yes. You have. I'm there Good. every year when my grandparents are there because the, there's this trigger fish that blows bubbles at me. Good. Come off them. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Well, that's awesome. Well, Mr. Rudlow, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And I will Good. be talking to our 4 H members in the fall about what type of service projects we can do. So if there are specific right. things that you might need, keep me in touch with that. And then I'll be offering that. We have members who range in age from five to 18. So there's all different, all different interests and skill levels in terms of the activities that the 4-H youth like to do. Well, that's wonderful. And you are our future. So yes, let's keep in touch. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Evan, thank you. Everybody have a good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon, right. Get it out of here.